All right, guys, now it's time to open our boxes. The great part we've been waiting for, property mailboxes. Um, get your knife. Cut it open. It should easily open from one end, and you should have quite a bit of stuff in there. This is uh, quite a bit. So we've got the upgrade kit. You have an LCD screen that should have the cables, and you should also have a little knob. Um, I've had one person indicate that they had a uh, bent SD card and then a broken screen on another guy, but we got those taken care of. This is your upgraded power supply. Um, make sure that you have four wires that are plugged in. So if you have the top screw terminals, you'll go negative, positive, negative, positive. Make sure those are properly arranged. It should be done for you. It should be a 10 amp power supply. You'll also have a nice long 2040 aluminum extrusion so you can see what that looks like you will also have Teflon tubing this is Teflon it should be cut to length to 720 millimeters um, you'll have these little couplings on there if they don't come off you're supposed to squeeze the blue and pull. If they don't come off, I notice if you twist them a little bit, they should come off easier. Um, but yeah, they're just compression fittings. Continuing. A little bit of filament. This isn't really enough to do much. You guys are going to have to buy your own, but you can at least make a little cube or something out of this. Um, just at least get started. User manual. This is super important. It, we will be following this user manual step by step. So um, hopefully it's all you'll need to follow along. You have the, this is the build plate. Should have uh, four small holes, one in each corner of the plate. The back has this groove cut into it. You're also gonna have a PCB heated bed. Um, this is the thermistor for the bed, and you'll have power wires. Those should be soldered. The end should be soldered. The thermistor are the white wires, and these are the power wires. The white wires may have an extension with a clip, or they might be bare like this. There's a few different ways we're trying them out, but the end result should be the same. You'll have LEDs on one side, so the side with the LEDs should be up. The side with the white thermistor should be down, I believe. Eh. As long as these wires are facing down, that's what's important. And make sure this thermistor, the glass bead that's in there, um, isn't sticking out and over the bed because you don't want to sandwich that bead between these two pieces. All right, so that's the heated bed. Onward, we also have bunch of plates. I'll go over those in a bit. We have a power cord for power supply. There's more stuff. Um, ah, this one came with two, but typically you should only have one of these. Uh, this is the bed loom for the heated bed. You'll have the main package of components and then you'll have a secondary side box. So that is the entire box. Let's go over the side box first. Um, you only have two parts in this. You got a bag of plastic components. Go over that in a minute. And then you also will have electronic components. And we opened these and we assembled them. And we loaded firmware. That's why they're open. Uh, we may have a process where we close them back up down the road, but they seem to be operating just fine. Um, so here's your ramps board, the red one. You'll have these four chips are stepper drivers. And the green, the blue board underneath is your Arduino. And they should all be sandwiched nicely. All the pins should be in the slots where they ought to be. And same with these boards. You also want to make sure that these cooling fins are properly aligned they're not shorting out the solder points we assemble a lot of these or I should say Weston assembles a lot of these 
<laughs> so, um, you know, we, we do so many of them that it's possible during shipping or packing that these could be crossing over. So just double check it, make sure they don't. All right, on to the main pack. The main pack. Hopefully it's not busted up on the corners. I've had international shipping indicate that there has been some cracked boxes. That sucks. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm sure we can get a $5 refund from insurance for that um, if it's necessary. Okay, onward. SD card. This SD card is super important. It has your CAD files. It has um, the print files, I believe, are ready to go on it. It's got firmware. We already loaded it, but it's got extra firmware if needed. It has the user manual, the entire thing in PDF format. So if you need to go in, some of these um, pictures are very small, but with the PDF format, you can zoom in nice and tight. Moving on, we have a 200 and I think this is a 248 millimeter uh, 2040 lead screw these are the rails that go on the bed they go on the front and the back if this is the back of the bed these go on the back this goes on the front bed moves back and forth the front of the bed comes at you and we'll have the in stop hole we, that's a modification we recently made. This will be on the right side towards the column, towards the Z screw, all that. All right, so these are called the L rails. These are the two 2020s, 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter aluminum extrusions. One is slightly shorter than the other. So this is like 293 millimeters. This one's 303 millimeters. The longer one, I believe goes <laughs> uh, I believe it goes on the top I'm pretty sure on that although I'm probably wrong it says it in the manual moving on once for the table once for the gantry you got four stepper motors these should all be identical should be no differences you should have a proximity sensor, hot end, thermistor, and this is your power wire. Double check that your thermistor looks okay. This can be a problem on the thermistor. Another thing is maybe make sure this is tightened up pretty tight. You want to make sure this is tightened up right here because you want to make sure that threaded barrel inside is snug in here and it's snug against here against the brass so those two meet inside this block just make sure that's all snugged up so it doesn't leak right off the bat and that's a terrible thing when everything's nice and cleaned up you're ready to go and then it starts leaking the first 10 minutes into a print you get two fans that's just a little bonus a gt tube timing belt kit usb cord the larger loom is for the hot end the smaller loom is for the bed, the upgrade kit, heat of bed. This is for the hot end and all the components that run up top. Okay, more parts. This bundle should be four connectors. They're all custom length cut for the motors. Four connectors. Here we are. We got this guy. Now it's important to take a look at these wires. The long ones that are maybe twisted. I don't even think they're soldered. These are used for the terminals to power accessories. Um, so this should be roughly 175 millimeters long. You've got the red and black limit switch. This limit switch, make sure that these two wires are soldered to the side where that red button is. That red button, two wires. Um, not on this one. If we mess that up, we missed a, two or three of them have been wrong. So just double check it. If your limit switch isn't working, it's most likely that one of these wires was soldered to the wrong side. Um, you may only have a double connector here instead of a four. And we may switch these limit switches in the future. This long one is for the hot end up on the gantry. Um, it is one 
thousand and fifty millimeters so a little over a meter long about the length of that ruler up there this is your Y limit switch it's for the table and it's about 400 millimeters long I think this is a fan extension so your fans they're supposed to plug in should plug in like so um, and it looks like we did green for ground and blue for power on these um, you may have to strip these strip them and use them it'll be powered from the terminal powers so when you strip these you can twist them together and then bolt them all together It'll sh I'll show you that in a little bit um, actually that's quite a ways down this is a bolt for your spool holder okay these are M5 by 60 bolts these guys are used to hold the carriage you only need two of them for 3d printing if you want to do some milling these uh, rounded bolts are hard to the button cap are hard to find at 60 millimeter lengths um, so I went ahead and threw in two extra for everybody um, and if you're doing milling you'll need four of them total but you only need two of them for 3d printing two of them for laser cutting not that we recommend doing that all right these are all the same washers these are M these are 10 by 5 by 1 so that's one millimeter thick and they're very accurate and they have to be accurate M3 nuts M5 nuts these are quarter inch spacers somebody said they can be found at like ace hardware but I haven't seen them um, I think we had a couple missing in two or three kits uh, you should have 18 of these things so hopefully we don't miss two of them in any future kits <laughs> these are t-nuts these are the thicker t-nuts that slide into these aluminum pieces they just slide in there and the bolts come down through them okay got a bunch of those you have some these are all m3 you got three bags of m3s you should have a bunch of short ones these are m3 by 8 these are all M3 by 20, I believe. There should be 14 of them. These are a mixture. You'll have two to three uh, M3, three of them. M3 by 50s. You'll have, I don't know, where's my numbers at? <laughs> Wrong sheet. All right. You'll have uh, a couple M3 by 25s, maybe an M3 by 20, some different stuff like that. Actually, these were M3 by 16. Okay, these are M5 by 25s, M5 by 35s. Should be seven and eight of them, respectively. These are M5 by 10s, there should be a, a bunch. Uh, you definitely wanna go through and check to make sure you have all these parts. All these parts, this is a little out of order. All these parts can be found in the parts list. That makes sense. Parts in the parts list. So we're basically going through uh, the drive system, or not that yet. Going through some electronics. We've done that. Going through hardware. Um, okay. This is part of the frame. These are 90 degree braces. You'll have three of them with nubs and one side without. With nubs and without with nubs without and the last one the fourth one there'll be no nubs on either side and that's very important probably <laughs> all right <clears throat> you should have three rolls of bearings um, 10 per roll that's 30. those bearings go in wheels these are v-wheels um, i believe you have 12 of these guys and then these are kind of these are your Z coupling. It should be five millimeter for the motor shaft, and the other side should be eight millimeter, and that's for your lead screw. 
not sure if I covered that briefly. Lead screw is 300 millimeters long by eight millimeters in diameter. It's a four start, so there's four helical threads. All right, next we have, due to camera difficulty, um, we're gonna continue. Um, so this bag has many assorted parts. You're gonna have an M5 by 50 partial thread, an M5 by 25 partial thread. You're gonna have a brass uh, Z-nut, so this threads into this guy. Gonna have some large springs that's for the extruder tensioner some small springs for the bed a gear mk8 gear this gear is for the um, drive uh, extruder drive to drive the filament um, you're gonna have a few of these bolts these a quarter inch by whatever bolts for the spool holder i think there's like five six of them two or i think two of these small screws and one of the more important things that is an absolute must is this T-nut, this little square. It's extremely flat. You have two of them. Those are super important for holding the, the belts in place. And they are unique from the other T-nuts that we covered earlier. These are thick T-nuts. Those were flat. All right, so these are your extras. This is a little bonus, specifically for the Kickstarters. Um, I may or may not include this down the road, um, but you should have a uh, extra stepper driver with heat sink, and you got a bunch of these little tiny jumpers. Um, all of these have jumpers, like they were jumped in the traces underneath, so we didn't install them, but I don't have a use for them, and maybe somebody's didn't, I have no idea. There's jumpers there. You got some other cool bonus stuff in your bonus bag. Um, you should have all the proper um, necessary keys. One key is inside of your belts. That is like the 2.0. This should be a 1.5. This should be a 2.5. And this should be a 3, I believe. All right, so you get an extra V-wheel. Every once in a while, we'd have one with a flat spot in it. So an extra one, just to be safe. You get two extra bearings. Those are probably more suited for replacing the extruder bearings. These are just 625ZZs. You get an all metal hot end. Only use this for PLA, or I'm sorry, ABS. This is only to be used for ABS. The hot end comes with a Teflon lined all metal barrel for PLA, low temp. This is high temp, nylon, stuff like that, um, which is more advanced. I recommend starting off with PLA. You also get a nozzle to go with it, um, as they recommend changing nozzles. Generally, you'll have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle opening. That's industry standard. You also have a couple extra M5 nuts, M5 by 10s, a couple T nuts, or M5 by 10 bolts. Couple extra washers, an M3 nut or two, M5 nut. Anyways, get a few extra parts just to be on the safe side in case we make some changes. So that is the entire kit. Um, I highly recommend that you double check <laughs> all your parts uh, before starting and not dropping them everywhere or dropping them in one compartment. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all of the parts that you need. Double check them with your list. And uh, nah, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go over metal plates just real quick. Um, that way you kinda, if you're still watching this and haven't skipped onward, you can just jump to the next video and you can see the carriage begin to be built. Okay, we got some X bearing holders um these go on the end of the gantry to take the belt like a bearing kind of sandwich a bearing you should have one short one long you also have two of these guys these guys are um for the table one will go here one will go there and the table will sit on top of these these rails they'll go with the rails you'll see how it goes together this is your carriage plate I got a good clean view of it. Um, next after carriage comes your extruder or your gantry plates. 
So one attaches to a rail here. You get a bunch of uh, wheels sandwiched between these two, and this is your gantry support plate. Go something kind of like that. All right. Then you also have an X motor plate. So on the opposite side of this one, right, you have an X motor plate that goes about right here-ish, um, somewhere around like that. Might be a little tighter in. You have, next you would assemble the, uh, well, after that you would then put this guy on the end of the gantry. You have an XYZ plate. I call it that because this is an X, no, YZE plate. So this is the Y motor that moves the table back and forth. This is the Z motor that bolts on. And this moves the Z lead screw, like such. And then this is the extruder motor. And so it's gonna drive the ex large extruder gear, the small one, and the whole extruder assembly. And then this is the extruder support plate, or something like that. And they kind of go together like that so that the holes kind of line up. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but you get the idea. All right, so those are your main plates. And finally, the table wheel plate. Um, this goes on to the frame. So just as a quick preview, you, your short frame piece, that's your base frame piece. This goes on somewhere about there. This guy, goes on here. You'll have two holes on one side and one hole over here. So it'll kind of be set up something like that when everything's bolted together. All right. We're going to go ahead and move on to one thing to do for sure is to wash all these parts, clean them up good. There is some residue, some wax or oil from cutting. Uh, from the laser cutter. These are your plastic parts. Put them in here. Now be very careful because there's one plastic part that is very small. Um, it's this guy right here. This is a spacer for your bearing. Your spacer is going to be kind of in the middle of... Eh. Yeah, so you got your extruder block. The spacer is going to be for your extruder to yeah, space. <laughs> These are extruder parts, your large gear, small gear. Your small gear goes on your motor upside down, actually. It looks like it would go this way, but it actually goes upside down. Um, this is a ramps holder. You have two holes here. Those are bolt holes for uh, a negative and a positive power supply. Your USB goes here. And the ramps board basically sits in like that. You only have three bolts that hold those down. This back one isn't used um, because there's no through hole there. All right. Um, this is another extruder piece. Uh, it's called the tensioner arm. The tensioner arm has a tensioner plate right here. It attaches something like that. Something like that. A screw goes here. This gets sandwiched. There's a bearing that goes in there. This whole tension arm pivots and pushes against um, the wheel, uh, the extruder block. Extruder block. This is the side where the Teflon tube filament goes in here, comes through here, through the middle. A gear in here gets turned and pushes filament out. This tensioner arm compresses like that. So that's all extruder pieces. Um, your hot end is going to have some clamps. These two clamps are identical. They clamp the hot end like so. Yeah, yeah. M5 bolts. This guy is a fan bracket. Make sure your fans, aside with the sticker, air goes past the sticker that direction. So these get attached like so. 
and then uh, your proximity sensor clamp is right here and it goes over here you can check out the CAD model for a more detailed view of all this stuff these might be attached together as they are here so you may have to just kind of gently break them apart um, <clears throat> so this is your carriage this is your belt block it's gonna go back here kind of like that on your carriage plate with your hot end clamps like that just a general idea all right spool holder peg so we know this is the spool holder blah 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 I don't think this is actually covered in the manual but this will go through here and then a bunch of bolts go in sequentially behind it all right so that should cover the hot end right here spool holder extruder um, this is your Z uh, what's it called? Z nut clamp so this brass fitting goes in like that and the holes are specific right here you can either run bolts going upward or you can run bolts going downward depending on if you want the gantry to slip up off of the Z screw you got two limit switch holders this part we're doing away with this was replaced by this um, this is that so it's like this exact same thing so all we needed was that extra hole there um, so this part is useless don't use it uh, these are limit switch holders um, limit switches go in there we're gonna have to do a slight modification here drill it out hopefully in the future that will be changed these little three little holes um, I'll show you how those work the this holds <clears throat> this is the final piece it's like a limit switch bolt bracket so as this limit switch moves inward the switch gets hit by the bolt none of that makes sense quite yet but that's pretty much everything guys every part we've gone over um, if you sat through all that kudos um, hopefully at this point you've moved on to the next video uh, thanks